Welcome Rocket football fans to another coaches show. We, this week the Rockets will be at Fulton City and this is a game uh, Coach Thompson. Uh, they're winless and uh, maybe a little desperate. <laughs> they're 11 guys on the roster. Uh, they forfeited two games uh, already this season, but this is a home game for them, and, and we're going to play. We're going to go down there and play this game. Yeah, we were able to uh, contact the coach today, and he confirmed that they're good to go this week. Um, they have 11 players on their roster, and that's what they play with. Uh, you know, they, they love football. It's like the story they did on them early. They just want to play, and, and the, I think the coach is doing a great job of providing those kids that opportunity. So, you know, as long as they have all 11 people, they're playing. Mm -hmm. And you've got to love it when you, you have 11 guys. And I think their roster shows 11, but I've seen some of the video, and there's a guy on the sideline. Yeah, sometimes. I don't know if he's uh, <laughs> don't he's, he's the what if, you yeah. know. <laughs> Take this guy just in case. Yeah, I don't know that. I just know that he confirmed they have 11 players, yeah. and, 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 and they're ready to play football this week. So, And that's all they're showing on the roster. But certainly uh, this is a game that, that – we feel like going into we should win okay so you know historically the Rockets uh, have handled uh, the Bulldogs pretty easily we've won 19 of the last 20 games the last time they beat us coach was in 2007 it was a close game down there they had some pretty good athletes on that team <clears throat> but then you know uh, we've the last two decades uh, we've dominated this series but you know there was a time they led this series Fulton said he uh, led the series 19-6 uh, to 6 at one time. Yeah, I can see where that area goes through spurts of having athletes. Mm -hmm. It's just when they can have the numbers. Um, I, when I was in high school playing against them, they were good. Um, they had uh, Arion Farrell. Farrell. They went to UT Martin. Yeah. He was amazing, a quarterback. Um, so they, I, I'd say they go through spurts of having guys. It's just about numbers with them. There's not many boys right. in the school, period. Right. It's not one of the smallest schools, mm -hmm. if not the, the yeah. smallest school in the state, uh, public school anyway, that uh, plays football. And, and, you know, we know what the expenses are that oh, <laughs> go into yeah, that. I don't, I don't know how they've continued. And I know this may be the last year they're going to play that competitive uh, type yeah, of championship for, season. Yeah, they have already pulled out. Of district play for next year, so I don't I don't know if they'll continue to play a, a non-district um, schedule and try to continue playing. But I mean, we can't predict that. We, you know, we don't know what's yeah, going on no. there. But you know, they're playing now. It's our first district game, and it's important that we go in there and do what we're supposed to do. And uh, just to give you an idea, of the the difference in these two teams, Litkin House ratings ranks every team in the state of Kentucky. And in Class A, there are 32 football teams. Fulton City's ranked number 26. I'm not sure who's ranked below them, yeah. but uh, they're 26, and we're number three. So uh, this is certainly a game we go into. It's more about what we're going to do and, mm -hmm. and uh, try to take care of business early, I'm sure, and then you want to get those starters out yeah. and hopefully get some of these younger guys some playing time. I'm sure that's what you, you know, you don't go in uh, knowing that, but it's certainly yeah, something. Yeah, we want to we want to show that we show we want the players to come out and show us coaches and, and even the fans that we can go in and do what we're supposed to do and and, and respect the game, right. respect the opponent, and go out and, and and play with the same passion that you play every week. Um, so that's what we're looking for out of our guys. They have scored 22 points all season, Coach. You know what? If you were the guy on that sideline this Friday night. You're over on the Bulldogs sideline. You're the head coach. What do you do? You know, you, you just take your shots. It's, it's about there's, there's no there's no reason to hold back at this point. You're you're own six. You know, your numbers are down. It's just take your shots. Have fun with it. You know, it's not a it's not you're not looking for it. You're looking for small victories. So figuring out what different ways, having fun. The trick plays. You know, I love trick plays. <laughs> Just having fun with that stuff um, because it's fun for the players. So if, when you only have 11, you know, that's the way that you can go and find some ways that, to maybe get in the end zone and get some excitement going at the halfway point of the season. They've kind of always been noted for that, running a lot of those mm -hmm. trick plays. And, and like you say, just playing for pride. And yeah, so we have, you know, we, any, any, any boy that can walk and chew bubble gum is probably on the team, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah. And, and, you know, you've got to tip your They're big old boys, I'm telling you. Yeah. they got some big boys. they got some guys that can move. Um, it's just they, there's not many of them. So, um, you know, we still got to go out and play football and, and do our job. Well, I know this is not, uh, a game that looking on the schedule a few weeks ago, we said, gosh, we hope we play, yeah. you know, because yeah. it's not fair to – 
to our kids not to be able to play all 10 regular season games. You know, we've got some guys that are really chasing some career highlight, uh, you know, record, the record book. Uh, Hunter Boone right now is number one in Class A in passing, and his brother Tyler Boone's number one in tackles. That's a – that's pretty nice to have yeah, in it. That's coach. awesome. The Boone brothers at it again. No that's wonder awesome. we're four and one and almost yeah. five and zero. Oh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's good. You know, see, you know, we don't want to lose this game because we don't want for your seniors especially. You know, this this. So Coach Norris used to always do. This is the last first day of camp week. You know, this is their last first district game ever for the senior. You know, for the senior class. So we want we we want them to have that opportunity and go in and be able to. Do what they do, you know. So, before we go any further, I want to be sure and get our trivia question in this week, and I have it here. And this is pretty tough. Andy's he keeps doing better and better. You know, uh, I think we've got a couple of guys who've dominated the question. So, Andy says we're going we're not even, we're not going to throw that slow curve at him this week. We're going to throw him a slider, a wipeout slider. So, get this one, guys. Okay, this former Rocket football player is the only Crittenden County player to score four touchdowns in a football game and to score them four different ways. So we have a receiving touchdown, a rushing touchdown, a punt return, and a fumble return for a touchdown. So uh, that's, this is going to be a fun one for those guys. That, that, uh, I know there's places they can go look and find that kind of stuff. This one may not be in there. I'm not sure. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. But if you've got the answer, take it down to H&H &H Supply in Marion, Kentucky, right across from Liberty Fuels. Tell them the answer. If it's correct, they will give you a gift certificate for a free round of golf down at Deer Lakes Golf Course in Salem. And uh, that includes a golf and a cre uh, uh, green fee and your golf cart. So go down and, and if you got the answer, and, and enjoy a round of golf on uh, the guys down at Deer Lakes. So appreciate appreciate them providing this opportunity. We got a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. uh, back to the football game at hand, Coach. We've got uh, three starters out and uh, some other guys that are, are still kind of banged up. So what is? It? Give me a personnel report this week. Uh, who you got to move around to make this thing work? So obviously Preston's still out. He's going to be out. Um, Caden, he's still in his recovery pro process. Caden McAllister, and then now, now Ian, Cousin, Ellington. Ian Ellington is about is looking at the same time frame. Basically, maybe possibly both of those guys in the playoffs. Um, possibly, uh, there's no guarantees with either one of them. But um, basically, Ian's knee ended up being, he tore um, a PCL. So the, the, the ligament that's in the back of your leg, which yeah. is pretty rare. Yeah, very rare to do that. Situation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know, with rehab, it, it could heal up on its, on its own, and, and he could avoid surgery. So that's what we're hoping for. And it's not even about getting him back to the field. It's just what we're hoping for for him personally, you know, just – health, you know, not having right. to go under the knife and, and have surgery. So um, that, that's where he's at. You still got Jagger who, who's nursing his broken hand um, and trying to avoid having to go in there and have surgery. Um, hopefully that's healing well. And same thing with Justin Phillips who had maybe a crack in, his, in one of his ribs and he's healing. He's, um, he's, he, def, he is, he got, we got an update today. He is getting better. And he should be able to start running in about a week. So mm -hmm. that's a positive. And he was well. a guy that was coming in off the sideline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, all of those guys were playing. Yeah, no really. kidding. I mean, everybody. So, yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, you you look at Yates to come in and, and probably bump Gibson yep. in to guard. And Gibson's he, normally a tackle. You're going to bring tackle. him down but with mm -hmm. Ian's absence, bring yeah. him down to the guard and, yeah. put, and put Yates in, the in there at the tackle. Yeah. And, and Yates has been performing very well for a freshman. Oh, yeah. He comes in there and he plays hard, that's, and that's what it's all right. about. You're just fitting that mentality that we're, we're going to play hard every play and we're going to get after you, and, and he, he fits that mold. So He's about the only freshman that's really getting a whole lot of quality time. Yeah, man. right now right. he is. And there's some other guys that could, you know, especially on the line. You, you look at, um, especially really early in the year, you had uh, Coleman Stone and – Tucker Sharp, they were as tough as anybody mm -hmm. out there, you know. And, you know, with opportunities provide themselves, you have to make sure you take advantage of them. So hopefully when they get their chance, which could be this week, 
you know, they take advantage of that and show that they can play on Friday night. Yeah, I know those guys are excited about getting in there. We'll talk a little bit about a, a few of the plays last week. Uh, you know, Brandon Lamey's pick six was, was a big one. He said uh, after the game, I did a little video of him, and he, you know, asked him which was his favorite play, or maybe that was on the podcast, but he said definitely the pick six. Yeah. Take us through that play a little bit. Uh, I was, from my view, I saw it the whole way. I, I, and to me, you, you, as a quarterback coach, you, you, you hope that quarterback doesn't make that throw. But he just kept his eyes on it. It was predictable, just like we thought. And Lamey sat and broke on it. Hits him right in the chest like he was the receiver, and he takes it off. When Lamey has the ball in space, he, he's just as explosive as him. And right down our sideline. Right down it was the sideline. It's exciting, you know. So I'm, I'm behind the play, and probably 10 yards in front of me, Gavin comes off the sideline and just clears out three or four people. And typically, I'm a guy that gets excited, just like the players. So when that happens, typically I'm running down the sideline with the ball on so if, I, if I'm doing my typical, Gavin probably trucks me on the play. <laughs> we have a, a great highlight. <laughs> so. Of course, uh, Braxton Winters had a, had a pickoff, too. And his, it was just like he it was yeah, thrown right to him. Straight to him, you know, just undercutting route. Well, I mean, just undercutting routes, basically, being where you're supposed to be. And, and he did a good job. Sitting right there. Sitting, doing what he's coached to do. And. And they get some yards afterwards, you know. He's a guy that can move with the ball as well. Well, who got the belt this week? Uh, Lamey? Pretty, pretty sure Lamey, Lamey got it. There was some, um, you know, there's opportunities for points elsewhere, so it was actually a really close thing. But once you get that defensive touchdown. That's pretty big. It, it basically takes you over the top. And that's so. what won his heart over this yeah, week. For, you know, yeah. a guy scores four <laughs> touchdowns, and he picks the defensive score yeah, out. Yeah, and he loves it. You know, he's the guy. He's probably, him and Gavin have probably been the most crazy about that belt and making sure that they are going after that belt. You know, uh, I always go back to the trig game with Lamey. He lays out for a pick. It would have been an amazing pick if he made it. You know, he lays out, doesn't get it, and he's upset. You know, he just made a play, and he's upset. But in the back of his mind, he's like, I might have just missed that out on the bell. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, I keep I keep promoing this. We're going to have a segment, our player segment, is going to be on that belt. Uh, we're still working on it. Still, yeah. it's one of those, you know, it's when you're, you're shooting for an Emmy Award, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, you've yeah. got to really put a lot of time and energy into it. The other play I want to talk about, speaking of Emmy Awards, I mean, the pass catch that uh, Peyton Riley had was yeah. one, that was one for the uh, the big screen. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, for us, the people that are around him every day, you don't, that's nothing. That's what he does every day. You watch him practice it at practice. It's it's normal for him. So for you guys to get to see that on Friday, it, it's it's special for sure. It was a great catch. I'm not trying to take anything away from it. We're just used to it. Yeah. You know, we're used to it. So he practices that stuff. And when you when you when you work hard at something, you're it, when it's time on Friday, it's easy. It's second mm -hmm. nature, and that's where he's gotten to. He has great focus and great hand eye coordination. He's got great control of his body. So we can see him make a lot of catches like that going mm -hmm. the rest of the year. Well, my pick to click this week is going to be Devin Nesbitt. We hadn't heard a yeah. lot about Devin the last couple yeah. of weeks. He had a little injury, and then yeah. last week uh, did some big plays we yeah. scored on, and I think this week Devin's going to pile up some yards down there. Yeah, you know, coming back from the concussion, you know, and you're going against one of the best, in my opinion, one of the best linebackers in Western Kentucky, yeah. and what we said was we're not going to block him. <laughs> we're just going to let him go. We're going to use him. We're going to use his aggression against him. So it put him in a lot of situations where – he was getting hit by him all night without being blocked. But at the same time, we were pulling that ball out of his gut and filling that that void where he left. Yeah. And, and we were able to take advantage right of that. Right down the pipe. So, you know, that's part of, you know, Devin is one of our premier guys, and he's okay going Friday night and having the ball taken out of his gut, his carries for the success yeah. of the team. And that just shows you each week it's going to be someone else, and they're okay with that. So... You know, that, that's just huge. It shows a lot in his character and the team's character, really. So, Well, the Rockets are ranked number seven, Coach. You know, we thought we might get a little uptick, but gosh, all those teams in front of us are pretty good and they're yeah. playing well. You know, Campbellsville's right in front of us at number six. Mm -hmm. They're the team that, uh, the only team in the top ten that we could see until we got to sub-state, mm -hmm. you know, if we get that far. But, uh, you know, Beachwood uh, jumped up to number one this week, a little mm -hmm. shuffling uh, there at the top, but gosh, a lot of good football teams up there in front of us. Yeah, you know, we beat Caldwell. We pulled that out. We might have seen ourselves go up a little bit higher than we are right now. 
um, because Caldwell in in the state is still a premier team, sure. and 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 they are, you know, in my eyes as well. But we get that win, we probably move up. But we definitely jump Campbellsville with the uh, with the Caldwell win that gives us, I mean, three games really that are pretty yeah. good games. And you know, it, it, you see people say things like. Uh, well, Union must be down. They're not as good as they used to be. I, I, hey, I hate that more than anything. Maybe, maybe Crittenden County's just pretty darn good. And I think that's the case. And I think we caught Union County off guard because they are a good football team. Yeah. And we'll see this week. Union County will be at Caldwell County. And we'll, we'll get a good uh, look at uh, how good Union County is, obviously, because they play Caldwell a pretty close game. And we know what Caldwell's got. Mm -hmm. That's a big game we'll have our eye on this week. Some other games we'll be watching. Uh, uh, upcoming opponent. Ballard Memorial will be at Webster and we've already seen Webster so that'll be a that's uh, two teams with one win apiece. Mm -hmm. uh, Fulton County four and one at Russellville two and four. What do you think about that one? I think that we'll get to see what Fulton County is because you know Russellville they've taken their lumps they've played a tough schedule and you know they, they're going through their changes coach offense and they're just young, but Fulton County, they're much improved according to their schedule, and and we should we'll see, mm -hmm. we'll see because Russellville still, you have to think Russellville still the might be a little team. chatter out yeah. there in different places for some of these teams, and yeah. that that's going to make things yeah. interesting down the stretch. Uh, another game we'll have our eyes on this week: Paducah Tillman's at Trigg County. Uh, Trick County, you know, uh, saved the game where we kind of handled them, <laughs> handed, handed it to them, in fact. You know, they're 4-2 and two going against a 4-2 and two Tillman team. Yeah, Trick, it's, something's clicked for them. They're, they must be playing a lot different. Um, and, and well, I, they hadn't played us. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to sit here and take anything away from our win there. It's just that they were, I don't feel like they were together out there. Just being out there on the field and just listening to the way they talk to each other and all that well, stuff. Well, they were coming off their only other loss at McLean, yeah, yeah. and, and uh, that was a close loss. It's just different. It's difficult when you have a mesh to be successful. Mm -hmm. But something's clicked for them, and I really think that they're a team that can surprise some teams. Oh, yeah. I Especially think with and, Tillman having and, some injuries. Right, and this is a, a di district game that Tillman really mm -hmm. needs a win after losing Caldwell yeah, County. Definitely. Uh, uh, some other uh, teams we definitely want to keep our eyes on, as we mentioned, Campbellsville. They're five and one. They'll be at Russell County. That's not a district game. Russell County's a three A team, but uh, we'll always want to keep our eye on what Campbellsville's doing. But so uh, the two, the other game in over in that next district, Bethlehem will be at Caverna, and those teams have both one win apiece. So be interesting to see. This could that game uh, could determine who we might play yeah. in that first round. Uh, and then Fort Knox over there is idle this week, so uh, we'll, we do keep our eyes on on those guys. You know, we're Bethlehem, Caverna, Fort Knox very likely could be a first round g game yeah. for us this year. Yeah. Well, Coach, uh, anything else you this week? I know it, it's one of those weeks where it's it's hard to say a whole lot about your opponent. We, you know, I don't even have any statistics on them. I don't. They're not reporting anything. And, uh, the, the main thing I want to say is we are playing. They have 11 <laughs> people. Crittenden County will play at Fulton City this week, this Friday, 7 o'clock. So. And it's a shame we're not going to be in Rocket Stadium because <laughs> yeah. everybody's wanting another party yeah, like we yeah. had last week. Party every Friday. Sometimes you just got to travel a little you bit. Gotta, you got to go on the road. Party. But we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll be back at Rocket Stadium. The following week, no, I take that back. We're going to be back on the road at Ballard, yeah. Can Ballard County the next week, and then we'll come home for the pink out game against Fulton County, a big district game, and that's one we'll want to fill the stands yeah. for. Yeah. All right, we're going to fill them every Friday. That's right, <laughs> and we're doing it. Y'all, yeah, the everywhere. kids are doing it for sure, yeah, aren't they? Let's do it, yes. Yeah, what a season, man, and we look forward to the rest of it. All right, Coach, well, we're going to cut out of here. Uh, looking forward to this game down at Fulton City. Hope people make that long road trip down there. But first, we want to go to our player segment tonight. My name is Mitchell Joyce, and uh, I'm in the stands of the Rocket Stadium. And usually it's pretty packed on a Friday night, but it's empty right now. And I'm here to tell you about all the different positions I play on the field on a Friday night and uh, what I do in those different positions and, and how much I enjoy doing what I do. I could be a hybrid linebacker. Or I could be a safety in coverage. On offense, I could be a receiver. On a Friday night, there's a, a lot of different places I could be on the field. It's uh, There's so many different atmospheres that you can get from a Friday night because you can be on one side of the field and see your full family, 
sitting there watching you and they're they're only paying attention to you where you can see all your buddies sitting up in the student section and that's a great feeling because they're just they just want Crittenden County to win and they're just having the time of their life on a Friday night and um, there's really no other feeling like it especially if you uh, are making big plays. I'm Parker Johnson I came from Owensboro Kentucky and I'm the kicker uh, in Owensboro I played soccer for Apollo and it's a lot different than football here because uh, it's more there's not as much attention surrounding it. It's we're, we're lucky to get an article in the sports section of the newspaper uh, for soccer at Apollo, but here it's just like the entire the entire city, the entire county just surrounds Rocket football, and it's just it's awesome the environment. It's probably the most excited I've ever get like on, at night for games, for any games. It's just the fans, everybody shows out, and it's just like people talk to you after the games, and you've never seen them before, but they know you. It's just an awesome feeling. Honestly, it's kind of a big adjustment kicking a soccer ball to a football. It's a lot lot different process. It really is like the steps, the kick, where you want to kick the ball, the contact. It's just, it's completely different. It's a lot different than you'd think. Of um, I'm Noah Perkins. Uh, I'm backup kicker to Parker Johnson. Uh, we're going to explain how to like striking points on a football while kicking extra points. I usually start off about just kind of eyeballing it, doing maybe foot, foot and a half, kind of making my foot, kind of get the T like towards the middle of my foot, kind of make sure I'm pointed up to the upright. I usually do three steps back and then two to the left. And I take my planting foot, my left foot, and point it to where I want it to plant next to the tee. And I kind of set up, kind of put more of my weight on my back foot. Kind of about like, it kind of gets like a, the furthest point out, like right here, you want to kick a little bit under that. The hardest part of your foot right there, so that's where like, you know, get good sound and where it's the biggest, and it'll go the farthest. All right, where you want to hit the ball with your foot is right here on your metatarsal. Right here is where you want to kick it. And you want to lock your knee and your ankle while you kick it so you'll get the best part on the ball. I hope you enjoyed this week's player segment. And I hope you learned something about kicking a football.